The field of sports science is continually evolving as athletes search for new ways to better understand their bodies. One of the newest innovations involves using a DNA test to create bespoke training plans based on an individual's response to different exercise and diet factors. My name is Andrew Steele. I'm uh, one of the founding team and head of product here at DNA Fit. And I was also an Olympic athlete running the 400 meters for Great Britain. So taking a DNA test is it's really very simple actually. It's a, a cotton saliva swab and that's just rubbed on the inside of the cheek, uh, sent off to our laboratory in the UK. And it takes us about 10 days to analyze the genetic variants we need to create the report. On the exercise and training side, we're looking at training intensity response, injury predisposition, recovery speed, how trainable an athlete's VO2 max is, and then nutrition-wise, we're looking at individual response to carbohydrates, to fats, to certain micronutrients and vitamins, and then we add that into the picture, especially in a professional sporting context, of all the other sports science metrics and physiology data we take into account, to just create better personalised planning, um, whether you're looking at a team or an individual athlete. DNA analysis has already been used by athletes such as Olympic gold medalist Greg Rutherford and the Egyptian national football team. Earlier this year, Rugby World Cup winner and South Africa's record try scorer Brian Habana became the first to publicly release the results of his test. I think if one looks at you know, genetic testing overall, I think it's more about getting to know yourself a bit better. For me, obviously there was a lot that was known and sort of over the years that you know, you'd come to understand. But I think you know one of the big things that stood out for me was in terms of my power compared to my endurance where I probably feel that you know I've got fast twitch muscle fibers so I perform better when exercising at you know short intervals but at, at maximum power but that endurance is actually one of my uh, my strong points or something I hadn't realized it's, it's easy to get to know your body over a very long time um, but with genetic testing you know you can find out exact details about how your body performs under certain circumstances so that, that's very exciting as a professional athlete and especially a rugby player, you know, you've got 10 to 15 years to maximize your potential of, of playing the best you, you can possibly play and making sure your body is in as good a condition um, to, to go forwards. In the first half of my career, I trained in a certain way that was somewhat unorthodox at the top level. I, I did a lot of mileage for a 400 meter run and actually was quite successful for me. I reached the Beijing Olympic Games, ran under 45 seconds. Then after that, I made a training change to sort of train a bit more like everybody else did at the top end, which was primarily a sprint-based program. And the truth is, it didn't work for me. I spent four years doing that in the run-up to the London 2012 Games. I didn't make the team. I actually got worse over those four years. Too late in the process, I actually learned a number of really interesting genetic factors. One of them being there's a gene called the ACTN3 gene. And there's a certain version of this gene which basically every Olympic sprinter that's ever been genotyped has, and I didn't have it. And that gene plays a role in response to sprint training, in response to resistance training, and I didn't have that. So I was the absolute anomaly when it came to that gene. And so therefore my training needed to take that into account, and it didn't. So everything about genetics is saying, well, the average advice is fine if you're the average. If you're not the average, we need to know, so we can deviate from the average advice and create a more personalized plan. Coming towards the end of my career, there's probably not a lot that has changed, but it's, it's about understanding you know, how I could possibly have trained a bit better early on in my career, in terms of understanding you know, that you can push yourself a little bit more in terms of your endurance training. And I think for, for rugby especially, there's a lot more scientific knowledge coming towards the game and improving yourself and as an individual, but also then collectively as a team. We want to collect a thousand professional rugby player samples leading up to the Japan 2019 World Cup. The reason for doing it is to understand rugby from a DNA analysis point of view a lot better and in that way be able to put training plans into place for position specific um, areas so you know whether you're a, a tight five, a loose forward, a backline player, you know whether your power endurance ratio you know leads more towards endurance or leads more towards power um, that you can maximize that potential from a truly scientific point of view to be able to not only excel uh, but perform at the highest level for a very long time.